Hey everybody, this is John Breen. Welcome to the Breen Machine video blog. Today we're going to be talking about 3D cameras. My local LMI distributor was kind enough to get me uh, a couple demos so that I could show you guys. And I'm really excited because we work a lot with these cameras. And I hope uh, this will help you understand what a 3D camera does and why you might pick one kind over the other. There are two basic kinds of 3D cameras. And this isn't 3D camera like what your Samsung phone might do. This is 3D camera like an industrial vision inspection application. This one uses a laser line and it has one camera. This one uses what we call structured light, and I'll talk about what that is in a minute. I'm gonna start with the laser because this is probably the most common. It's the simplest to understand and it's a really good starting point for us. So, first things first, I'm gonna turn this on for you so you can see what the laser looks like. This laser happens to be a blue laser. Sometimes you'll see a red laser. Most often I find the blue lasers are on the small ones where we're trying to measure really tiny features because blue has a smaller wavelength, and I think that has something to do with it, but I'm no physicist. Red lasers we often see on the bigger applications where we're me measuring across a wide conveyor or something like that. So, how does this work? Let's start by just assuming that instead of a line, we have a dot, because that's just a little easier conceptually to understand. We've got a laser dot, let's say, coming out the front here. And this is actually a camera, so it's got a lens and everything, and just like any camera, all the light that comes in here is focused through the lens. And it has an angle and it hits a sensor here. In this case, we're talking about a point. So we'll call that sensor a line that fits right about here. So depending on where that bounces off of, that one point of laser, it's going to come into the camera at a different angle and hit a different part of the sensor. Super easy, right? We can just tell based on which pixel it hit exactly what the distance is. Now, Let's just take that same thing and line a bunch of them up in this direction, in the depth in your view right now. Now we have a line. We have a laser line and we have a 2D instead of a 1D sensor here. Just like any normal camera except it's sensing just that one wavelength. Everything's filtered so that it's not super sensitive to outside light. So now we have a 2D representation. We have a profile and sometimes we use that just the way it is, but let's talk about 3D. If we scan that across a part, or if a part moves underneath it, now we have a 3D image. And obviously that's just the top of the part, we don't see the bottom of the part, so there's shadows and other things like that. By the way, the shadow, if uh, I try to measure on the other side of my hand, this camera can't see the laser line, even though the laser line is getting there, even though that might be in range. We call that the occluded angle. It's easier to think about it like a shadow, but shadow you know, may or may not be quite, quite right and the occluded angle is just what they say in industry. So that's a good term to know. So what are these ones good for? Like I say, they're the most common ones that I see and I think that's for a few reasons. First of all, they're simpler. Simpler means it's a little bit less expensive, it's faster to process and to get your data and it, it can actually be a little smaller because we only have the one camera on it. I also find sometimes it's easier to find this kind of camera that's high resolution that, or that measures really small things than it is to find in a structured light snapshot camera. So what are the drawbacks? Well, we have to have some kind of movement. And if we have a conveyor already, we get that for free, that's great. If we don't have any movement in our process, then we have to come up with a way to move this or to move the part in a consistent way, in a way that's uh, smooth and repeatable or has an encoder on it. And that starts to get expensive. You have to pay for a servo, maybe you have to pay for slides and other hardware. And uh, so the cost savings of this simpler, cheaper unit start to go away. So that leads us to our next type of camera. And again, I've called this a snapshot camera. I've used the term structured light. Let's talk about what that means. We've got a light source in the middle, kind of like we had a, a light source, a laser here. We've got a structured light source here. We've got the two cameras, and you can see them on the bottom there. Two cameras at different angles. 
So the occluded angle idea might be a little bit different on this camera than it was on that one because we only had the one angle to think about. Now what is structured light? Structured light in essence just means this is a projector. It can put out a picture instead of just shining a light bulb. And that's important because over here we had a line and we had to move that line across the part. In this case, I like to think about it like this structured light is putting out a picture of a bunch of lines. So those lines are already across the part. Now we take a picture from this side and a picture from this side and we can see the waves in those straight lines and those waves tell us the 3D data that we're looking for. In this case, we take a bunch of pictures with different structured light. So it's gonna project different widths and positions of lines to get us a really high res image. The good thing is it's high resolution, it's, it's accurate. The bad thing is it's slower. We take a bunch of pictures, everyone has exposure time. And then after we take all those pictures, now we have to stitch them all together into 3D data. So there's more time to take the picture and more time to process the picture. Like I say, it's also a little more expensive. You're paying for two cameras, you're paying for structured light instead of just a laser. But again, in those stationary applications, now you have something that's not, uh, doesn't require another axis of motion. You don't have to pay for a servo or the slides or anything else. In the end, which one do you pick? Well, it's mostly up to your application, right? The biggest thing is, like I say, motion. This one works great if you have any motion already. If you have motion of an indexing table that turns, you can put this between stations that are doing assembly if you want, and it'll just catch that part as it goes by. Great. In that case, if you've got acceleration or deceleration while the part's going on, you, you might need an encoder, but it's still fairly simple compared to having a whole servo set up or whatever. Again, this is uh, simpler, cheaper, and can be higher resolution and it's faster. So it's just better if you have that motion. If you don't have the motion, this is absolutely the one to go with. Um, and again, there's the price comparison to consider. So I hope that helps clarify what these do. I'm going to uh, probably have these for just a little bit longer. So if you have questions about 3D cameras or how to use them, please let me know. I want to make more videos on them.